Here in Europe we now expect Islamic atrocities daily. It's becoming routine. And nobody's ever surprised when the police and the media pretend they're motivated by right-wing extremism or mental illness or anything other than Islamic Jihad. Nor are we surprised when the actual motivation turns out to be Islamic Jihad again and again and again. Do you think we're becoming cynical? Europe's politicians are out of control, and one in particular is out of her mind. German Chancellor Angela Merkel is importing war into Europe, and she knows it. We all do. You'd have to be blind or stupid or progressive not to see it, or not to want to see it. Recently, she again refused to reverse her disastrous open-door policy to the Muslim Third World, despite a recent spate of almost daily terror attacks in Germany. And this is worrying news for the rest of Europe, because we're all threatened by this woman's madness. The unelected president of the European Commission has made it clear that open borders are here to stay, no matter how many people are murdered by Islamic terrorists crossing them at will. And we know in advance that the victims of the next atrocity will be innocent members of the public, as usual. Not the politicians who've enabled the invasion, nor the journalists who've sanitised its consequences. It won't be their families that get ripped apart and have their lives destroyed. Most of the people flooding into Europe are not refugees, and everyone knows it. They're illegal migrants, invited by Merkel, mostly fighting-age men who've left the women and children behind to fight the war they're supposed to be fleeing. We don't know where they're all going to live, but we do know it won't be anywhere near the people who are letting them in. If past form is any guide, most will end up in ever-expanding Muslim ghettos where women aren't safe and the police dare not go. Europe is riddled with these places now. In France, the army is already making contingency plans to retake these areas when the inhabitants start defending them with the Kalashnikovs and anti-tank missiles that have been smuggled in from the Balkans and the Middle East. Whenever they find a military-grade weapons cache in a Muslim area, nobody is shocked or surprised anymore. We expect it now, and we expect nobody to be deported for it. Recently, the French Prime Minister said that we just have to learn to live with terrorism, which means they're simply going to wait for the next massacre, and then the politicians will put on their long faces and repeat their usual platitudes, which are now so threadbare, they're beyond embarrassing. They're humiliating, degrading and insulting. They really need to find some new ones, or people might begin to doubt their sincerity. And they'd better make it quick, too, because the next Islamic Jihad murder could happen at any time. I'm a bit surprised we haven't heard about one already today, but then it is only lunchtime. The problem here is that we're not simply importing more people into Europe. We are importing a hostile, parallel society that is never going to integrate. We're importing guaranteed social conflict, and given the supremacist nature of this parallel society, ultimately we are importing war. The politicians enabling this invasion must know that the longer it continues, the worse the violence is going to get. But they clearly consider the murder of innocent people a price worth paying to validate their political obsessions. Which brings me to the point of this video. The most common question I get asked by people who are worried about the forced Islamization of the West is, realistically, what can I do? Well, realistically, there are two things we can all do. We can speak out against it, and we can vote against it. Now, speaking out might well be traumatic, as you will get negative feedback. You might even get threats, depending on whom you're talking to. Also, your personal reputation is likely to suffer, and you might lose a few friends. You could even lose your job. And if you live in Europe, there's a chance you could be arrested and prosecuted as a criminal, as has happened to people in several countries. And that kind of vibe is not for everyone. I get that. But everyone can vote. And Brexit showed that we, the people, do have the power to change our society's direction if we focus together with intent and use that power. The politicians running Europe have no intention of changing direction, and they need to be replaced urgently by people who will. That's not going to happen by itself. Brexit was won against all odds because millions of people made a personal decision to make a difference. If every individual who opposes the Islamization of the West makes a personal commitment to stop voting for the people who've enabled it and to vote for people who'll put a stop to it, things will change. If not, they won't. It really is that simple. And that's all that any of us has to do. And if enough of us do it, 
as with Brexit, it will happen. And if you feel that you can afford to speak out as well without having your life destroyed, that would be great. And the fact that I'm even having to say those words should tell you all you need to know about what's wrong with our society. An arrogant PC political class that thinks it knows best for everyone is the tail that's been wagging the dog for too long. It has twisted our society's liberal values around and turned them against us and is now leading us by the nose into a violent dead end. It's time for the sane, common sense majority to take back control before it's too late. And if this generation doesn't do it, it will be too late and our children and grandchildren will be condemned to a society significantly more dangerous, less civilised and less free than the one we were lucky enough to be born into. That is some legacy. A society riven by permanent war with knifings, shootings, suicide bombs, car bombs and machine gun massacres taken for granted. And it will be our fault because we can see it coming even those of us who pretend we can't. We are not helpless here. We have a duty to put a stop to this madness and we have the power. All we have to do is use it. Peace.